Is there going to be a change in the tide from what teams that you see out there that are going to be unstoppable to teams that used to be unstoppable or kind of falling off the track a little bit? Want to talk about the NFC, AFC, want to talk about the Eagles, the rest of their schedule, the NFC East in general, and just moving forward to what the Eagles have to do and just keep winning. Um, let's get straight into all the news. Because I've seen enough horror movies to know any weirdo wearing a mask is never friendly. What is going on, guys? So I definitely want to talk about the NFC East. I want to talk about kind of just how everything's been going through really half of the season so far. And the Eagles are 8-0. OK, and uh, next opponent is going to be the Washington Commanders next week, which, you know, they have uh, Taylor Heineke, which has been a switch from Carson Wentz, have won the last two out of three games. They did lose against the Vikings. Um, I kind of want to talk about the schedules, too, because I look at the Vikings schedule. The only losses from the Philadelphia Eagles on Monday night, which they totally shut them down. The Vikings didn't really have too much of a bad schedule this year, not a hard schedule and, and a pretty easy schedule itself. Um, you know, if you want to talk about the Washington Commanders, you could have Chase Young back by next week. So that obviously could have them at four and six by next Monday night. And I, I think it's going to maybe put a dagger through them um, of making the playoffs, depending if, you know, maybe some other teams win or lose. Maybe they'll have to rely on some teams at the end of the year to get them in the playoffs if that's going to be the case. But we'll see. Um, when you talk about the Green Bay Packers, Detroit Lions, Green Bay's lost the last five games. I mean, it's it's Green Bay is really bad. I mean, it's bad. Aaron Rodgers looks bad. Too many new pieces. Um, there's just there, there's a couple injuries. You know, there's a lot of changes to that team right now. You gave you know Aaron Rodgers a big contract and. Uh, kind of like Aaron Rodgers is dealing with a rebuilding team right now with with too many new faces and. It's just not working out. He threw three picks, two in the red zone, which is not, you know, Aaron Rodgers doesn't throw picks in the red zone, but it's just been a very, if the if the Lions are beating you, it's it's not a good sign. It's really, really not a good sign at all. So with Aaron Rodgers and what he's been doing, Eagles still have that game on their schedule. So um, how the Eagles have been, you know, uh, respecting too many quarterbacks and not putting enough pressure on these quarterbacks, you don't want, um, you know, uh, Green Bay to get their first win in a long in five, six games, you know, depending, I think we play them in a couple of weeks, um, let them get their first win by, you know, Aaron Rodgers picking us apart. Um, and obviously the Lions have really given up over 30 to 35 points a game. I mean, only held them to nine points, which you know how bad Green Bay is at this point. Between the Buffalo Bills and the Jets, I think that was an interesting one because Buffalo has kind of been got a little pat on the back earlier in the season when I think when they lost against the Colts. You know, early in the season, you know, they lost against them and, you know, they kind of swept it under the rug. Like they didn't really talk any trash about them, you know, and, and what's going on. So I think Josh Allen actually I think he was actually leading in carries in that game. And they just traded for Hines, that running back from the Colts. I don't know why. Um, you know, I don't know why they, they went in a different direction here with this game, but obviously the Jets defense played very well. Um, and Josh Allen threw, I think a pick or two, I don't know how many picks he threw, um, which, which is interesting, but, um, are the bills a legitimate threat now? I mean, it seems like every time the Eagles win, it just seems like uh, we we're still not getting the respect that we deserve. And obviously because of our schedule and the only above 500 team we have really beaten right now is pretty much the Minnesota Vikings. I mean, that's it, uh, which they are seven and one now. Okay. Um, you know, you look at the rest of the schedule here, which really kind of, it takes part. If you want to talk about a team in the NFC East, that's had a little bit of a harder schedule than the Cowboys, um, the Cowboys commanders and the, and the Philadelphia Eagles is the New York giants. Okay. The New York giants have played Baltimore. They have played Tennessee and they played Tennessee very early in the year. Uh, I don't think their defense was playing up to par at that time as it is playing at a high, at a high percentage right now. Um, but they face some good teams defensively. with Wink Martindale's their defensive coordinator. They've been playing really good. Um, offensively, there's not a lot of weapons there, but they just do enough. And that defense is just, it's just, it's limitless. Like they do not give up in games. Like they come back and they are a tough team defensively. So the Eagles still got to face that run game with Saquon Barkley. The Eagles still got to face that Giants defense that who would have known that they would have, um, you know, had a really good record this year. And that's not really sitting in the basement right now. So that one's really interesting. Um, but when it comes to the Philadelphia Eagles going forward, you know, and obviously the run defense, we've been talking about that and, you know, 
Green Bay was the game I was worried about earlier in the season. And then obviously the aftermath of what's going on with Green Bay with the Packers right now. I think you're kind of switching to the other side um, and kind of seeing like maybe that's not the team that's a big threat to the Eagles for their first loss on the schedule. If you're looking at a team right now, it's going to be the Tennessee Titans. OK, Derrick Henry is a beast. That offense runs through him. If he starts running really great, the whole offense just clicks. OK, Malik Willis has started a few games, couple games already. And that guy as coming out of the draft. I said he had the biggest ceiling, the highest ceiling out of all the quarterbacks that were drafted in the draft. Um, and a powerful arm and almost runs the same offense. You know, they kind of tweak their offense a little bit to his strengths with the RPO, the read option. Now the Eagles are going to kind of get a taste of their own medicine. You know, we faced Kyler Murray, but he didn't run on us as much as I thought he was going to. But with Malik Willis there, and if it works, and I think the only thing that's good about r facing an offense like this is because, Hertz kind of runs the same thing that the Titans do with Malik Willis. It's the same, you know, they're almost like the same, um, you know, they almost play the same way, obviously with the RPO and the read option and stuff. So it's nice that the Eagles can get some nice looks from Jalen Hurts when they play the Titans for that week. Um, and it's going to be a tough game. I think that's going to be the game where the Eagles could have a loss if I'm going to switch to it. As much as I want them to be undefeated, I feel like there's going to be a loss in there somehow, some way. Um, and obviously, this is the revenge game for A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown is going to want the ball a lot during this game, so definitely count on it, okay? So um, I have switched from Green Bay, and this was, like I said, the Green Bay thing was earlier in the year, pre pretty much the off season to like right before the season started. I see Green Bay will be the hardest um, team on our schedule, but Tennessee was um, struggling earlier in the year. They were dealing with a lot of injuries and now they are starting to get that run game going with Derrick Henry. And now with the new quarterback behind there, okay, with Malik Willis, it totally changes the way that offense is run. And you have a guy that's mobile, kind of like Jalen Hurts, RPO read options going to trick you. I want to see what this guy can do uh, uh, do against us, and I think he's gonna, you know, I think he's gonna play well. I think he has been playing well, and as long as that run game is working, he's gonna be successful. And if it's not, if the Eagles shut down Derrick Henry, which I don't think they're gonna shut him down, but they at least have to hold him. Um, he could still have 100 yards in the game, but the Eagles could still hold him for a good amount. You know what I mean? So you don't want this guy to get two to 300 yards rushing on us because the way that Damian Pierce played last week with the bad tackling. And obviously, like I said, the Texans on Thursday night, it was a short week. It was a Thursday night game. They had walkthroughs for not even three days. They had no physical contact um, during practice, and they had to go to Houston uh, on a Thursday night and travel which really sucks. And a, a lot of teams play sloppy because of that on a short week. But the Tennessee Titans is definitely going to be a very exciting game on both sides. So depending if the Eagles are still undefeated by that time, which they should be, um, is going to be a very interesting game. So when you talk about the NFC in general, and you talk about what's been going on so far, the 49ers, the Seahawks are two teams I'm kind of looking at right now that the Eagles could face in the playoffs, and they, who knows, they could be facing an NFC East opponent. This isn't the NFC least anymore. This is the NFC East that's a very, the, you know, pretty much the, the strong point of the NFC conference. This is the strong division right now, which I'm really glad the NFC East is back to being good as of right now. And like I said, I've talked about our schedules. I am not biased. I'm not picking sides, but I'm going to say like, yeah, the Eagles have had a pretty, pretty manageable schedule. The Cowboys have had a manageable schedule and the Giants have had a little bit more of a harder schedule than us, but I feel like they have caught, they did catch the Titans at the wrong time of the season when they weren't playing off the par, when they did beat them early, early in the season. So it definitely makes sense. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about, obviously, the games from the other day. Uh, what what do you think the first loss is going to come for the Philadelphia Eagles? What is going to be this kind of sneaky, kind of dark horse team that's going to kind of, you know, uh, you know, kind of out of left field is just going to really show themselves worthy um, and really fight? Like, what team do you think that is? So, um, should be interesting. Uh, and like I said, down the road, we'll see. We had Washington Monday night, but it was nice just to – I didn't have a chance to watch all these games because I had a lot of housework to do. I didn't stream any games on Sunday – but I wanted to at least go over all of that and kind of see how things are panning out. The Buffalo Bills, maybe they're not going to be talked about as much anymore because now losing to the Jets, uh, the AFC East is a beast right now. Between you know, All those teams are very close between one win or one loss from each other. 
Um, so these divisions are getting pretty close. This is just a very weird year for a lot of teams. So what we thought beginning of the season to what we thought now are two com completely different things. But the Eagles are the only undefeated team that's left. So, so let me know what you guys think about uh, just in general the first loss, where you think that's going to be. And if you think they're still going to be undefeated the whole entire season, then great. If not, then it is what it is. Uh, but the Eagles just have to stay focused, and the Eagles have to compensate between – they have to compensate for Jordan Davis so that he's not in because you're going to be facing some really good running backs coming weeks, not to mention you got to face Saquon Barkley two more two times because you haven't even faced the Giants yet, which I think is going to be a pretty big game. Um, and usually they are, they are blowouts or they, you know, the Eagles have, you know, besides, besides last year, which it was a very young team last year. And, um, you know, there was a lot of issues last year, totally different Philadelphia Eagles team this year, totally different New York Giants team this year. Cowboys are sitting right now and, um, you could be looking at where you can get help, uh, from a team where, you know, the, the Vikings are going to be playing the bills next week, probably going to lose that game. Which is better for us for for seed for seeding for the playoffs as well. So you, got, you know the Eagles will hold on to that first seed, which is going to be really important for them. So if they lose against Buffalo, if the Vikings lose against Buffalo next week, they have to play the Cowboys right after that, and hopefully they are pissed off. They have to play in Minnesota against the Cowboys. So who knows? That could be a loss for the Dallas Cowboys down the road. Um, so we could start to separate ourselves just a little bit if, if, the, if the Dallas Cowboys lose one of those two games between Green Bay or the Minnesota Vikings. I think the Minnesota Vikings one is more realistic. And then going into that Christmas Eve game between Eagles and Dallas um, in Dallas. So that should be fun. Christmas Eve. Can't wait. All right. I'll see you guys on the next one, guys. You guys have a fantastic day. Shakes what up. Follow us. Peace out, guys. Peace.